The offseason has officially arrived with the NBA Finals concluding after the Boston Celtics took down the Dallas Mavericks in five games, and I don't want to say I told you so, but in my NBA Finals preview, I did in fact predict the Celtics to win in five, so I'm just saying I was pretty on the money there. Shifting gears to the next phase though, things are going to start ramping up quickly this summer, with teams devising game plans for moves they want to make, and with that being the case on the business side of basketball, it means that every team has at least one expendable player, which brings us to today's video. In each of my next two videos, we will be going through every single NBA team, and we'll be picking out one player they need to trade the most this offseason, with today being about the Eastern Conference teams, and my next video finishing with the Western Conference teams. Before we start, though, it turns out a good amount of you watching right now aren't even subscribed to the channel, so if you enjoy the content, consider hitting the subscribe button, as not only does it help out a ton, but I'd also very much appreciate it. Now with that being said, let's begin. We'll be going in alphabetical order starting with the Atlanta Hawks, and the player they need to trade this summer is DeJounte Murray. The Hawks seem like one of the teams most likely to make a big trade this offseason, with a few years in a row of underwhelming play, proving that their original experiment of bringing DeJounte Murray in may have to come to an end. Both he and Trey Young seem like they could be on the trade block at the moment, but it's probably more realistic for them to move DeJounte and try to find a better fit for Trey. Next is the Boston Celtics, and the player they need to trade this summer is Drew Holiday. After bringing him in to help them win it all, and succeeding in doing so, the Celtics need to stay proactive to try to go back to back moving forward, and Drew Holiday is still owed $134 million over the next four years, and his play has noticeably been declining a bit at age 34. His contract should be used to help them retool, because as we saw with the Nuggets this year, if you get complacent after winning a championship, you can get past up. Up next is the Brooklyn Nets, and the player they need to trade this summer is Mikhail Bridges. Bridges exploded early on in his Nets tenure, and the Nets declined some big trade offers for him over the last year and a half, but over the course of this full season, he started to come back down to earth a little bit, ending the year averaging below 20 points per game. Contending teams will still absolutely be calling, trying to acquire him with some big offers, so the Nets need to be realistic and strike while the iron is hot. Next is the Charlotte Hornets, and the player they need to trade this summer is Miles Bridges. Bridges is technically a free agent this offseason, but the Hornets hold his bird rights, so from my point of view, it's best for them to work with Bridges and his agent to find him a new home so they can move past all of the issues from the past few years, and they wouldn't lose him for no return either, which is definitely a plus. Up next is the Chicago Bulls, and the player they need to trade this summer is Zach Levine. Levine seemed like a lock to be traded before this season's trade deadline, but he opted to get surgery that ended his season, which dissuaded any other teams from putting together offers for him until the summer when they would have a better idea of how his recovery was going. Levine is back working out now and seems to be on track for a successful recovery, so the interest on the market should reignite as teams could view him as a buy-low candidate for getting potential all-star our talent after having a pretty down year this past season. Next is the Cleveland Cavaliers, and the player they need to trade this summer is Donovan Mitchell. Of course, this would be a controversial selection for a video like this, but the situation is going to come down to whether or not Mitchell is willing to sign a contract extension with the team this summer, and if he's showing any hesitations in doing so, it's probably for the best for both parties to just get a trade done. The longer they hold Mitchell, the less value he'll have in trades, because he has just one year left on his contract, and if they hold him through the end of it, they they risk him leaving in free agency, getting nothing in return. Up next is the Detroit Pistons, and the player they need to trade this summer is Isaiah Stewart. The Pistons don't really have that many players under contract going into the offseason, as they have decisions regarding team options and extensions on a lot of guys, but Stewart is probably the most expendable of the bunch they do have. He's shown noticeable improvement as a three-point shooter, but isn't good enough to start at the power forward position, and Jalen Duran is the clear starting center for the team moving forward, so paying Stewart $15 million per year to be a backup is something the Pistons should try to avoid. Next is the Indiana Pacers, and the player they should trade this summer is Jalen Smith. 
The Pacers are looking to pay Pascal Siakam a max contract extension, so they're going to have to clean up their books to maximize the rest of their rotation, and with Isaiah Jackson giving the Pacers good minutes in bunches in the playoffs, Jalen Smith's spot is not guaranteed. They both have similar contracts, so if Smith is the odd man out, it's best to just see what's out there for him. Next is the Miami Heat, and the player they need to trade this summer is Jimmy Butler. Butler's time in Miami has brought a lot of good, including two appearances in the NBA Finals, but he's now about to turn 35 years old, he's more injury prone, and he's not someone that can carry a team throughout the whole regular season, which is why they've been in the play-in tournament each of the last two years. He conserves himself for the playoffs, which is great, but the Heat aren't built to withstand that throughout an 82-game season, and with a few reports coming out that Butler Butler and the Heat are not on the best of terms right now, a move could be brewing. Next is the Milwaukee Bucks, and the player they need to trade this summer is Chris Middleton. The Bucks are another team in need of a quick fix because the clock is ticking on them and their current core. Middleton's all-star days are likely over after coming back from injuries, not looking like the same guy he used to be, and he's still owed $65 million over the next two seasons, so if they want to make another big splash, his contract will likely need to be included. Next is the New York Knicks, and the player they need to trade this summer is Julius Randle. The Knicks made some very promising strides in the playoffs this year, and they did it without Randle, which, after some horrific playoff showings from Randle in the past, proves the team can not only survive without him, but thrive in even more ways sometimes. Randle is obviously a very talented player, but he also has pretty obvious flaws that can hamper a team's ability to win at the highest level, and the Knicks probably need to upgrade on him in regard to start talent to get to that next level. Next is the Orlando Magic, and the player they need to trade this summer is Cole Anthony. Anthony has settled into a reserve role in Orlando now, but everything seems to be pointing towards the Magic looking for a star guard to bring in this offseason, which would create an even bigger logjam in their backcourt, and Anthony could end up being the odd man out, viewed as the most expendable. Up next is the Philadelphia 76ers, and the player they need to trade this summer is Paul Reed. The Sixers actually only have three players currently under contract going into the offseason, so the choices here were pretty limited. The other two players they have locked up are Joel Embiid and Ricky Council, so the Sixers have a lot of money to spend in free agency, and if they want to package some of their draft assets in a trade offer, it seems like Paul Reed would be the player included in a deal like that. Next is the Toronto Raptors, and the player they need to trade this summer is Bruce Brown. Brown is a highly coveted role player who has bounced around a bit in the past year, and the movement may not be done for him. The Raptors are now rebuilding, and they know contenders will be interested in adding Brown's two-way play to their rotations, so they're holding on to him until they receive an enticing trade offer. And finally, the last team in the East is the Washington Wizards, and the player they need to trade this summer is Denny Avdia. The Mavericks season turned around after their trade deadline trades that brought in PJ Washington and Daniel Gafford, two highly impactful role players that were previously on bad teams, and Avdia is widely viewed as the player who could be the next one to fall into that category. Good teams will want to trade for him, and his value could definitely be showcased in a situation outside of the lowly Wizards. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below who you think needs to be traded. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.